Grub 2 is the latest version of Grub. It is the Grand Unified Bootloader version 2. We now tend to call Grub 2 Grub, and we tend to call the earlier version of Grub Grub Legacy. So if you look at our previous video on using Grub Legacy, you'll see the old way of using Grub. In this video, we're going to talk about Grub 2 and the new ways of using Grub. And there are some significant differences between the Grub Legacy version and Grub 2. If you're installing one of the latest distributions of Linux, you're probably going to be using Grub2 as a bootloader. You'll find it in Ubuntu and Fedora and OpenSUSE and many, many more distributions. So you should certainly become very familiar with how Grub2 operates. You'll find that Grub2 is very different than Grub Legacy. All of the configuration files are in different places and have different formats in their configurations. And where files are located, the directory structure is completely different than Grub Legacy. If you'd like to compare what you're seeing here, there is that previous video working with Grub Legacy that can give you an idea of the old way of doing things, and then you can compare them with what you're about to learn with how Grub2 operates. Although Grub2 looks very similar to the older version of Grub, the files are very different. And the first place you'll see is that there is a single configuration file, very similar to the old version with Grub Legacy. You'll find that single configuration file in a directory called slash boot slash grub, grub.cfg. It's also very often found in slash boot slash grub2 to delineate the second version of grub in grub.cfg. Now, what's important about this particular configuration file is you don't edit this file directly. Instead, you're going to make changes somewhere else and then recompile them into this new version of the configuration file. You'll generally be touching files that are in etsy slash grub.d, or you'll be changing the default configurations in etsy slash default slash grub. Once you've now made your configuration changes into those files, you then will run a script to recreate those configuration files at grub.cfg. And on my system, for instance, I run grub2-makeconfig-o slash boot slash grub slash grubcfg. So it's an extra step that I have to go through to have it recreate the grub.cfg file. And you have to remember to do this because if you make a change into one of these configuration files and then reboot, you'll notice that your configuration files don't show up with the changes when grub starts up. You have to remember to recreate the grub.cfg, and then those changes will appear when you start the bootloader. Let's look at these configuration file changes. First, I'm in my slash boot slash grub2 directory. There's a number of files in here. And I'm going to look specifically at grub.cfg. And you can see at the very top of the file, it even tells you, don't edit this file. It's automatically generated by the grub2-makeconfig script. And it's going to pull those from Etsy grubd and Etsy default grub. So it's giving you some prompting to let you know that if you make changes here, they're going to be overwritten the next time you run that script change. And it does tell you you really need to be going to these two particular areas in your system to really make the changes you're looking for. So let's do that. Let's first look at Etsy slash grub-d. I'll go to Etsy grub.d. And we'll see there's a number of files within that directory. And here's where we could make changes. These are the files that are going to run. We even have a readme file that's inside this that tells us here's how we process these files when Grub is going to start. We've got header information, the native boot entries, third party applications, et cetera, et cetera. And it tells you you could make changes to these particular scripts so that they run in the order that you would like. There's also a section for Grub2 where you can make changes to the default settings for Grub2. And you'll find those in Etsy default. And you'll find inside of there is a file called Grub. This is where you will generally be setting those default configurations. You can see there are a lot of things to change inside of this. A lot of the names that are in here make perfect sense. For instance, the Grub distributor is OpenSUSE 12.3. I can make changes to timeout values in here. Here's the command line Linux default. Here's one for Linux recovery. I have information that I can put in here about the terminal information and what's there. But this looks very similar, those kernel settings that we had earlier and how we would like to view those. Now, if we make changes to this, for instance, I change my Grub timeout to be 30 seconds instead of 10 seconds and then save this file. I then have to go through and run that particular change. It even tells you at the top of the file, run grub2 make config dash o. So let's run that grub2 
mkconfig-o slash boot slash grub2 slash grub.cfg. And when I do that, it's going to run through and recreate the grub.cfg. So now I know if I restart this computer, if I do a shutdown now with the dash R to restart, it's going to turn the system off, restart it again, and then let's see what my settings will be when this system starts up from that particular prompt. I should get a 30-second countdown rather than the 10. And you can see, indeed, it has started with its 30-second countdown inside of this. And then from that particular menu option, I can then choose that to start my operating system. So just make sure you understand the differences between that older Grub Legacy and Grub 2. And you shouldn't have any problem getting your system started with the bootloader that you'd like to use on your system.